Hi, I'm Neil Strickland, CEO of GrowthOracle.com, How'sMyBusinessDoing.com, and NeilStrickland.com. For anyone that doesn't know me yet, I'm a management expert who has developed a range of automated business assessment tools for business consultants or advisors, as well as for small and medium business owners. This video is about change management and how it works. Change management is described in Wikipedia as any approach to transitioning individuals, teams and organisations using methods intended to redirect the use of resources, business process, budget allocations or other modes of operation that significantly reshape a company or organisation. But what does this really mean and how do business consultants implement successful change programmes for their clients? Let's start with why. Let us first understand why change is needed and why change management has evolved as a skill that consultants like us need to be able to offer to our clients. Change within organisations has largely resulted from globalisations and the need for businesses to become more flexible so that competitiveness and financial performance can be maintained or improved upon. The main drivers of change are political, technological, market, costs and competitive. From a political perspective, there's been a major move over the last 40 years to remove tariffs on trade and for trade packs to be put in place to facilitate international trade. Trade tariffs are only a fraction of what they were just 20 years ago and institutions and trade packs in the international space will continue to erode these tariffs over time. The EU is just one of many geographic trade blocks that removes barriers to trade. Other treaties and trade agreements that contribute to globalisation include the North American Free Trade Agreement, the Trans-Pacific Treaty, the African Union Treaty, the Asian Free Trade Area and the Transatlantic Treaty which is due to come into force in 2017 or 2018. Technological innovation continues to accelerate and this not only drives down costs for businesses but also creates new opportunities and new industries that are not hampered by international boundaries. Markets are no longer local or regional and have indeed become global. As domestic markets become saturated, companies become global and follow customers wherever they might be. This has increased the evolution of multinational corporations and multi-domestic companies with a true global presence wherein differentiated products can be produced and marketed in individual markets globally. Manufacturing businesses seeking lower costs have increasingly migrated to countries where lower labour and production costs are available. As skilled labour becomes available in low-cost economies, Multinational companies and multi-domestic companies move from one low-cost location to other ones with an even lower cost structure. Competition is truly global now for all businesses, even SMEs. SMEs now have the ability to source materials and skills right across the globe and to market their products globally when using the internet as a delivery channel. This was not possible even 20 years ago. Take for example my own business analysis software firm, Growth Oracle. Although I'm based in Ireland, I use skilled software developers in India, web developers in the Philippines, project managers in the United States, and I sell my products globally. Click here for the longer version of this article to learn more about the nature of change management, the barriers to successful change management, and how change management is best approached. Why not also subscribe to the blog so that you can automatically receive free weekly tips and updates from me on issues affecting business consultants, advisors and coaches. Every subscriber will get a free copy of my ebook about how to carry out a health check on a client's business.